Hi guys, welcome to TOK Today. Hi, I'm Daniel, and today we have a request from a viewer. So uh, we like to look after our viewers here on TOK Today, so we're going to meet their request. Before we go any further, if you find today's video useful, then hit like. And if you uh, want more content from the channel, um, and if you just want to be super generous, then please hit subscribe. Okay, so the full commentary for today's video can be found on toktoday.com, along with lots of other useful TOK resources. So today we're looking at the exhibition prompt, What are the Constraints on Knowledge? And without further ado, do the Zoom thing. So what constraints are there on the pursuit of knowledge? And this is TOK exhibition prompt number 15. You'll see my usual penguin there. But it's useful to look at the key terms in this uh, prompt. Um, the first key term being constraints. And we tend to think of this as being barriers, obstacles, or hindrances to the pursuit of knowledge. And the pursuit of knowledge, we're thinking of ways in which knowledge can be, can be attained. There's lots of different ways, including learning. Here's the suggested structure for how you would write up a single object. Um, you need to say what the object is. You could include the T a TOK concept if it was relevant. You need to explain the link between the object and the real world context. You need to explain the link to the knowledge claim and then justify the inclusion of that object. That's pretty straightforward. And here's how the overall commentary will be structured for all three objects. I strongly recommend coming up with three knowledge arguments to explore in your commentary before you come up with your objects. This makes coming up with the objects much easier and it means that, that your commentary will be far more specific. So here are my three knowledge claims. Knowledge claim one. The value framework of an authority figure or knowledge gatekeeper can be a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge. Knowledge claim two, the tools available to a knower can be a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge. And knowledge claim three, the value framework of a discipline or area of knowledge can be a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge. And we have another penguin. So here's my first object. It's a newspaper report about a school principal in Florida who showed her students a photograph of the statue of uh, David by Michelangelo. And um, the parents at this school thought that the students shouldn't have been shown the photo of this statue and therefore they forced the principal to resign. So I now need to link the real-world context of that newspaper report to the prompt. Now, you don't have to put that heading, the link of the real-world context of object one to the prompt, in your commentary. It shouldn't be there in your prompt commentary. But if you structure it in this way, it just helps you to get all of the marks required in the TOK exhibition. So my link here is that I explain that the school principal was forced to resign because she showed a picture of Michelangelo's David statue to students. So the parents forcing her to resign were acting as a constraint on the student's pursuit of knowledge. And the argument that I'm making here is that authority figures or gatekeepers can be a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge. That term gatekeepers is a useful term in TOK and one that you could go into if you are writing for this prompt. And we're going to go into this argument a little bit more in the next slide. So now I have to link object one to my knowledge claim one. And remember, knowledge claim one is that the value framework of an authority figure or knowledge gatekeeper can be a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge. And I'm going to say that the parents at the school have the power to define what knowledge is appropriate or inappropriate for the students to pursue and therefore they can censor knowledge, and this is a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge, and therefore the parents are external authority figures who are gatekeepers. And finally, I need to justify the inclusion of object one in the exhibition. Here we have a great paradox or an irony that 
Michelangelo's David as a symbol of the Renaissance period, a period when people were advocating for freedom of thought and expression. And yet in 21st century Florida, these parents wanted to restrict freedom of thought and expression, apparently on moral grounds. So this object is included because it shows a real paradox in the meaning and the use or application of this piece of knowledge, being the statue. Moving on to object two, and object two is Louis Pasteur's microscope that he used to study the diseases in silkworms in the 1860s and 1870s. And in the picture there, you see the silkworm cocoons from which the silkworms came that he studied. Linking object two to the prompt, we're going to explain that Pasteur was studying the diseases in the silkworms and that he needed the microscope to confirm the physical evidence for pre-existing theories. And if he hadn't had the microscope, he wouldn't have been able to confirm that physical evidence. And as such, a lack of technology is a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge and vice versa. Um, accessibility to technology is an enabler in the pursuit of knowledge. But we need to focus on the constraint, obviously. And so we need to link object two to the knowledge claim to. And in this case, knowledge claim to is that the tools available to a knower can be a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge. Tools meaning technology in this case. And in here, we're going to explain that, that prior to the development of a microscope, scientists have been unable to confirm the physical evidence for germ theory. But Pasteur had the microscope. It had been developed to a sufficiently sophisticated level that he was able to study processes such as fermentation and putrefaction in order to develop germ theory. So because those prior scientists were not able to do that, Object 2 demonstrates that a lack of technology can be a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge. And there's a lot more details on this in the commentary, which is on talktoday.com, link in the video description. Justifying the inclusion of Object 2 in the exhibition, we're going to explain how germ theory was crucial in the development of antibiotic medicines and this was a particularly significant and useful area of knowledge development for technology and for medicine and it was only enabled by technology and therefore this shows that a lack of technology can be a constraint on the development of important and significant knowledge. And finally, we come to object three. Object three is a photo of the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Laboratory, otherwise known as PEAR. Linking the real world context of object three to the prompt, we're going to explain that PEAR was a place where they studied the effect of the mind and human consciousness on physical objects and that it was closed down by Princeton University in 2007. And we're going to make the argument that it was closed down because it was challenging the principles of physics. This demonstrates the argument that the norms and values of a discipline, such as physics, or the area of knowledge natural sciences, can in themselves be a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge. Linking object three to knowledge claim three, we'll remind ourselves that knowledge claim three is, is that the value framework of a discipline or area of knowledge can in itself be a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge. And we're going to explain in more detail that the results of research at PEAR challenged Newton's laws, which are the fundamental principles of physics, that the methodology of research at PEAR was examined, but they couldn't find any significant problems with it. And as such, uh, the results of PEAR were directly challenging uh, what we understand to be the fundamentals of physics and that the physics establishment could not accept the pair findings and therefore they had to impose a constraint on the pursuit of knowledge and in this case specifically the knowledge that pair was uh, pursuing. And finally, we'll justify the inclusion of Object 3 and we'll talk about how the values and norms of a discipline define the content and methodology of that discipline. And therefore, if something like PEAR 
challenges that discipline, then what you have is you have a constraint on the evolution of, of the discipline, and this can lead to stasis in knowledge development in that particular discipline. And stasis is a product of the constraints on the pursuit of knowledge. Okay, well, I hope that you found that useful and it's going to help you with your commentary. Uh, remember, you don't have to write exactly what I wrote, but hopefully it will give you some ideas for what to write. If you want to get the full details of today's talk exhibition prompt, then you can get that over at talktoday.com, or link in the video description. Lots of other useful resources for the TOK exhibition and the TOK essay are available there. Please remember to hit like and subscribe. We love subscribes here. And all that's left for me to do is to wish you a great day, uh, to say that I hope to see you on the next video, and stay toctastic. Bye now.